in case you didn't hear what was just announced, um, this is a penultimate session of the public art program, the public program for Pinter. And we are addressing the question of militant or non-militant specialized institutions. And I'm very happy to welcome our three panelists. Well, Joanne Harwood, who is director of the Essex Collection of Latin American Art, Escala. Beth Colocci, who is chair of the UK Friends of uh, the National Museum of Women Artists, Women in the Arts. And Jill Harris, who is talking about the collection of women artists at New Hall in Cambridge. We'll uh, then have, I think, a little time for questions and discussion at the end. So, uh, Jo, would you like to start? Thank you. Um, thank you, Dawn and um, colleagues. And thank you to Andrea Harari for um, inviting me to participate in the panel um, on behalf of the University of Essex. I'd also like to thank Pinter's directors, Mauro Elitska and Alejandro Zaya, with whom we've been collaborati collaborating for quite a few years now. So thank you. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, although I do have um, the university's um, art collection website up here, um, and I'll refer to some artworks using that site. Um, I think I should just start by saying that um, in thinking about the question that's been posed, um, I will consider it in relation to a scholar as an entity um, that is a collection or a museum at the University of Essex that promotes art from an underrepresented region of the world, namely Latin America. So very much taking the geographical um, interpretation of militant rather than the women interpretation. Um, so Escala is devoted to art from Latin America, although our understanding of the term is quite broad and encompasses artists from the Caribbean and also from the US. Um, and whether this specialism is necessary in the age of globalization, and whether this makes us a militant specialized institution is, however, debatable. Um, it might help us to consider some of the meanings of the word militant in order to test them against our entity. So militant, according to the Cambridge Dictionaries Online, um, can mean active, determined, and often willing to use force. Um, according to um, Oxford um, uh, Dictionary, um, it can mean combative, aggressively persistent, strongly espousing a cause, entrenched, adamant. Um, so my initial thoughts in relation to considering these um, definitions um, turn to the University of Essex's founding vice-chancellor, um, Sir Albert Sloman, who gave the BBC Wreath Lectures in 1964 on the making of a university. And Sloman himself was a Hispanist um, who chose Latin America as one of the areas, areas of the world to be taught and researched at the University of Essex in order to, and I'm quoting here, dispel prevailing ignorance and prejudice of the region. So this focus on Latin America led to the founding in 1968 of the University's Center for Latin American Caribbean Studies, and ultimately, although indirectly, to the founding in 1993 of the University of Essex Collection of Latin American Art, WECLA, as a result of research and teaching in art history by Professor Dawn Addis, here today, and um, Professor Valerie Fraser. Um, and aware of the problems with the term Latin American art, um, when the opportunity arose to rename the collection in 2011 as part of a, a kind of website relaunch and a, a rebranding exercise, we chose Essex Collection of Art from Latin America, or, uh, or ASCALA, as its acronym is. Um, and this was also for other reasons, because the scala actually has meaning in Spanish and Portuguese. So um, in, in many senses, it was more meaningful um, term for us. Um, and this year, the university celebrates its 50th anniversary. Um, and if we reflect on Sloman's aim, then it's possible to say that, uh, especially through its work with art and artists from Latin America, the university has done much to dispel ignorance and prejudice of the region in the UK. 
Um, and this is also true of the university in terms of its um, celebrated human rights centre, for example. So it's not just through the collection. Um, but I should add um, that much ignorance and prejudice does remain, um, even at an institutional level. Um, and at the moment, when the tendency is for universities in the UK to broaden their appeal in order to attract an even larger number of students, areas that are considered to be too specialized find themselves under threat. Paradoxically, universities also need to find ways to stand out from their competitors. So they are keen to promote resources and specialisms that are distinctive and better still unique. At a time when other museums are perhaps keen to present art from Latin America in an international context, it is an advantage for Escala to highlight its <coughs> excuse me, um, area studies background. This allows the collection to move towards the center and towards the origins of the institution in interdisciplinary research and teaching, which are being celebrated for the university's 50th anniversary. It also responds to the original impulse of the collection, which was to be a resource that is engaged actively with its academic context. This context has always been very appealing to anyone we have worked with, whether artists, collectors, arts organizations, galleries, and of course, students and academics. The specialism of Escala is matched by specialisms within the Albert Sloman Library, which has a collection of some 80,000 books on Latin American studies, 8,000 of which are on art from Latin America. And this in effect makes um, the Albert Sloman Library the de facto national library for Latin American art. Um, and it's recognized as such by the British Library. Um, and these books um, in the library on Latin American studies and Latin American art are actually physically dispersed throughout the library and its stores. Um, so in that sense, that it's not a militant collection of books but um, they're brought together as a specialism in various catalogues um, in order for people to be able to locate them better. And um, currently we're looking at consolidating the Latin American specialisms at the university, so the book collection, um, the art collection, the, the collection's own archive, um, through printed publications, through online resources like our, our website, and also physically. And the aim, currently is for Escala to become the hub, um, or more literally in terms of the meaning of Escala in Spanish and Portuguese, the kind of stopover um, for those interested in Latin America from a range of disciplinary perspectives, as well as um, non, for non-academic audiences, so those are just interested in Latin America generally. Um, and this responds to the university's wider institutional aims but also to our own reflections on how we as a university collection can add to knowledge and human experience of Latin America and of art. So, you might well be wondering where the art is in all of this, because I've talked a lot about other things other than art. But actually, it's at the center. So Albert Sloman also believed that a university should be con concerned with living as well as with learning, and that art should be integral to university life. And while Escala's holdings might sometimes touch on militancy in their subject matter, none of them could, I believe, be described as combative, aggressively persistent, strongly espousing a cause, entrenched or adamant. Um, so in terms of kind of artworks that, that touch on militancy, I guess we might um, refer to works like Palabrama by Cecilia Vicuña, which we were very lucky to be able to purchase at Pinter um, last year um, with Jane England um, and with the help of Pinter. Um, other examples I can show you. Um, bear with me. Sorry. So um, another example might be uh, El Combate by Guatemalan artist um, Moses Barrios. Um, another example would be 
the work we have by Wilson Diaz. From Colombia, which is called Baño en el Cañito, um, a, uh, bathing in the in the stream. It's mistranslated here. Um, so, so some of our works actually touch on militancy in their subject matter, um, but actually, in and of themselves, and by their very nature, even the most committed artworks that we have. Um, propose a different kind of approach to the world and to human existence. So time and again, um, when we're using artworks in um, a classroom setting, we witness transformations in individuals and in groups um, when they're able to experience art at first hand. Um, art offers them a space to reflect, to react against disciplinary constraints, and most importantly, to to feel rather than to think, or to feel as well as to think. Um, and nor are many of Escala's holdings militant in proclaiming adamantly their Latin Americanness. Um, instead, as artworks, our holdings exist primarily as a means to connect people both to themselves and to one another. And as such, it does not matter at all that Escala is a specialized collection of art from Latin America. This non-militant approach to Escala's regional or area study specialism is perhaps a better way to encourage a broader number of people to take advantage of this resource and through this engagement to continue to dispel ignorance and prejudice of Latin America. At the same time, our specialism means that we can play a vital role in drawing attention to and supporting research into Latin America at the university and beyond, which is especially necessary in the UK where our colonial and post-colonial ties to the region are less obvious, but still important in a global context. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, thank you very much, Joe. The, the, um, is that still working? No. So we're moving now from, uh, from looking at a geographical, uh, as it were, way of looking at the question of militancy to, um, to that of gender. And uh, Beth will be talking about the museum dedicated to women artists. Thank you, organizers of Pinta, for having us here today. I'm Beth Colocci, and I'm the chairman of a UK group called the UK Friends of the National Museum of Women in the Arts. First, I'll spend some time introducing you to what that is, because I'm sure that many of you in this room have never heard of it before. And then I'd like to share with you some statistics about women in the art world and personal reflections on why I'm involved with this organization. So the National Museum of Women in the Arts is a museum based in Washington, DC. It was founded by Mrs. Wilhelmina Holliday, in 1987, it's opened its doors to the public. It is the only major museum in the world dedicated to art by women. The collection has 4,500 works and grows. And so if any of you have a collection of women artists, do consider donating to NIMWA. And I will call it NIMWA from henceforth. But the highlights include a full time period from the 16th and 17th centuries. It all started actually with the work of Clara Peters. Mrs. Holliday was on a journey through Europe. In the 1960s, she found this beautiful painting by Clara Peters. She went home to try and research about her and could find nothing on her. As a matter of fact, she went into Janssen's History of Art and could find no mention of a woman artist. And this began her search from the 1960s to dedicate herself to collecting art by women. As you see, we go through all the time periods, the 18th and 19th century, Vijay Le Brun, Maria Sibylla Mirian, the 20th century, Frida Kahlo, and anyone who's interested in seeing more of the highlights of the collection. We obviously have a wonderful Frida Kahlo, but I brought to you the highlights. So afterward, if you'd like to see this, feel free to look. What does NIMWA do? So NIMWA preserves and displays a collection of art. They present at least 10 exhibitions a year of women artists. 
They maintain a huge library and research center and sponsor scholarship around that. They publish art history books and a triannual magazine. Again, I have brought a sample of one edition, so anyone who would like to see our magazine, feel free to pick it up. They program concerts, films, stage readings, all focused on women artists. And they offer education, both for young and for old. But they also are supported by a group of national and international committees. In the US, there are more than 13 of them. And we are one of the international committees, which include Brazil, Chile, Czech Republic, France, Italy, Portugal, Spain. And what do we do? We are a UK charity formed in 2006, and we raise the awareness of art by women, past and present, in the UK. How do we do this? We organize events, including visiting museums and galleries when they have women artists on show. We visit women artist studios. We host panel discussions like this on topics about women in art. Uh, we also participate in NIMWA's biannual Women to Watch exhibition, and our next one will be coming up this autumn. The theme is going to be flora and fauna, and so we have a short list of British artists who have never before had a solo exhibition in the US, and one of those will get to participate in an exhibition at NIMWA in Washington, DC. And finally, we purchase works by British artists to gift to NIMWA, thereby giving British artists international exposure. And we've purchased two major gifts in the past seven years. One was a statue by Dame Elizabeth Frink, which is the first statue by Frink on display in a museum in the US. And similarly, Rose Wiley uh, was the winner of our Women to Watch now four years ago, which preceded her wonderful show at the Tate, and she fully credits with being part of Women to Watch as jump-starting her career here in the UK. Um, and we purchased a major work and gave that to the museum, and both of these were actually part of their silver anniversary celebration. But why did I get involved in this? Um, I am not trained in the art world. I'm a business person. When I left work, I went to Central St. Martin's to study photography, a long story in there. But I was absolutely shocked to see that the percentage of people in graduate schools is even or biased toward women. But who gets picked up and shown in galleries? It's the men. I'm used to that in the business world. I don't understand it in the contemporary art world. The Great East London Art Audit proves my theories. Um, they, the East London Fawcett Group did some wonderful work last year showing that of solo shows in non-commercial galleries in London, only 33% were women artists. And literally in commercial galleries in London, only 31% have female artists. In the US, 51% of visual artists are women. Only 28% of museum solo exhibitions spotlighted women in the eight big museums in the US in the 2000s. Women earn half of the MFAs, but only a quarter of them get solo shows in the New York galleries. The Gorilla Girls re-looked at their statistics again in 2005, and I'm sure many of you have seen this before, but this is the update. Do women have to be naked to get into the net? In 2005, the statistics are still there. Fewer than 3% of the artists in the modern art section are women, but 83% of the nudes are female. And Janssen's history of art has improved from the 80s when there were no women in Janssen's history of art, now there are 27, the whole history of the art world. And the plight is the same for women who actually work in the art world. In the US, women lag behind men in museum directorships where the budgets are over $15 million. They only hold 24% of the museum director positions, and they earn 71 cents for every dollar earned by male directors. And in the UK, the situation is not much better. 
In the UK, ACE says that 63% of specialist staff